very, very, very strange to eat as a starter. And this sausage is filled with blood. It's definitely something that's gonna break your teeth. <laughs> now I'm gonna try rooster testicles. Hello everybody and welcome to another video. Today we are here back in Budapest and we are gonna show you some of the must-try dishes of Hungary. We're gonna try some sweet dishes and some savory dishes and also some quite unusual dishes. But we do think you should try everything at least once. So let's eat. We're gonna be trying our first dish of the day, which is Gümüşlevesh. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. I mean, maybe I butchered the name, but it's basically Hungarian cold fruit soup. So this can come in all sorts of different flavors. We've had it before with peach. You can get it with strawberry, but the most traditional way is actually to have it with sour cherry, which we have had in the past and we're going to have in an upcoming video. But this one is actually made with raspberries. Although it may look like it is a dessert, it's actually a starter. It's perfect for the summer months when it's really hot because it's served chill. It's made with usually frozen fruits with some milk, sugar, and I guess flour. And this version looks absolutely delicious. We had to kind of track this down because it's getting close to fall and it kind of ends around then. You can even buy it in packages and make it at home as well. But let's just shut up and try this. Oh, wow, you can see all the big chunks of fruit. It looks like there's cheese in this or something. It's cream. Is it cream? This looks like a strawberry or a raspberry, I don't even know. Mmm. That's friggin' delicious. Yeah, that was a strawberry. So it has that tart sourness to it. It's really cool and refreshing. It's milky. It's absolutely delicious. This is probably one of the best ones we've had, actually. Mmm. The cream is almost like butter. Mmm. This is so good. This is like almost like melted raspberry ice cream. This is definitely a high-end version of the Hungarian food soup because usually it's a bit more watery. You just have a little bit of cream on top. And the waitress actually said that she doesn't like the normal fruit soup they serve in Hungary. So I'm wondering, do our viewers like this? Do you eat it all the time? I also read that some people actually eat it hot and not cold, like basically right out of the pot. The waitress said that she does love this version and I understand why. So good. This is more expensive, but actually only a little bit than the other one. So you should come here and actually try this version because this is divine. The next thing on the list today is kulbas or Hungarian sausages. And we have three different types here. So we have a traditional type, which is very red in color. And of course, with most Hungarian food, it gets that color from the paprika inside. Next, we have a liver sausage. And the final one here is a blood sausage. We also have a thing of pickles on the side, which is something that most people eat traditionally with this type of meal, because all the pickly, briny vinegar kind of flavor cuts through all the fattiness of the sausage. I'm gonna start with the traditional, and it's served with a side of mustard. Oh, it's so greasy, <laughs> it's so fatty, but it looks amazing. Mm. Yum. That was definitely maybe too big of a bite, but it's absolutely delicious. Of course, as it looks, it's very fatty, very greasy, very meaty, super juicy. I don't think you really taste the paprika flavor that much. It tastes kind of like a traditional sausage. It just clearly has a really high fat content. You can see the sheen on all of these. I definitely think that the mustard helps cut through that fat. And it's really, really tasty. And this place is actually called Bevaroshi Disnotorosh. I think that's how you say it. I think there's multiple branches of this place in Budapest. Mm. And everyone seems to come here. It's quite touristy, but I think locals come here too. And I think in the countryside, people normally have like big butcher sessions and that's where this kind of place comes from and this kind of food. They also sell the Hungarian pig with the hair here. Like that's a very famous dish that you can have here. Try the next one, which is liver sausage. Let's see. 
Mm. It tastes the liver, but it doesn't taste bad at all. It's very soft inside though. So it does kind of taste like a pate inside, but also a bit grainy like a sausage. It's, it's yummy. As I said earlier, they have all sorts of different pickles downstairs. They also have a bunch of different side salads, all sorts of things. We have beetroot, we have a pickle that's stuffed with cabbage. We also have some Hungarian spicy peppers as well. Mmm. It's juicy. Super briny, super pickly. This one's definitely a little bit spicy, but it's not too bad. I think even you could handle this, but it's really good. It's really good with the cabbage. It makes it better than just the pickle on its own. It's a little bit sweet and not too vinegary. And I'm gonna try this pepper. Let's see if it's spicy, because I'm not good with spicy. It's not spicy. It's very vinegary, but it tastes like those peppers you put on pizza in Italy. We put them on pizza in Germany as well. So these are one of my favorites. And this just perfectly goes with meat. We've tried blood sausage from all over the world, and actually, I usually like it. So let's see if the Hungarian version compares. Mm, pretty good. Honestly, I would say that this almost reminds me of blood pudding in the UK. It's got a really soft, kind of grainy texture, like Ani said with the other ones. You can feel the oats and the grains inside, but it's also pretty smooth. And you definitely do not taste that irony kind of blood taste. It's really good. It's just a delicious sausage. These are all really, really good, actually. I have to say, I think Hungarian blood sausage is some of the best blood sausages out there. We've tried it, as Brandon said, in many countries. And I think this is my favorite, along with Korean Sunday. Sunday. <laughs> yeah, it's really good. It's a good sausage. I like it. The next item that we're gonna try is super famous, probably one of the most famous food items from Hungary, which is langos. It's basically fried dough that they stretch. The traditional way you're supposed to eat it is with sour cream and cheese on top. We also got some garlic and it smells like garlic. It smells like garlic bread. We saw the woman make it fresh. She stretched the dough and put it in the fryer and we've had it before. It's delicious. You even get this sometimes at German Christmas markets. So even outside of Hungary, people love langos. Apparently the way you're supposed to eat it is rip the edges and then dunk it into the inside. Like a local. You can get other flavors or like other toppings like um, Hungarian sausage or ham, I think bacon, things like that. It's also sweet versions. Yes. The dough is perfectly crispy. It's kind of fluffy on the inside. Just like the perfect fried bread. And with the garlic, it's just delicious. Mm. Like most things in Budapest, prices differ. So there are a lot of places for langos that are quite expensive, especially when you go places like the Caravan, which is a very touristy place. This one was almost 1600, so it is more on the expensive side, I would say. It's kind of medium, but there are some places like the local market halls, not the main big one, but more local ones, where you can actually get them for like seven, 800. So make sure you get a cheap one, because they're all delicious. We came to Korheli restaurant and we're gonna try one of the most famous Hungarian dishes, I think, and that's paprika shilke, which is chicken paprikash or 
chicken with paprika mostly. It's a Hungarian comfort dish and it's been around since the 1800s and I guess it uses quite simple ingredients. It's chicken with usually dumplings and then a paprika cream sauce and I guess back in the days they would use older chicken because it's actually like cooked for a long time and therefore it's still delicious. So let's try this. This is a bit more of a fancier version. It's normally cooked in the sauce and the sauce is on top of the chicken. Here you have the sauce on the side, but let's see. Mm. It's delicious. The sauce is very like thick and creamy, like almost like a pumpkin soup, but obviously it's paprika flavor. It tastes like the standard Hungarian paprika dish and it has sour cream with it, which makes it delicious. And this one comes with a hash brown actually. Normally it's dumplings or um, sometimes egg noodles. This one's a bit different and I've never had hash browns like this with the Hungarian dish. I love potato. Mm. It's very crispy on the outside and soft or mushy, I don't know, on the inside and it just reminds me of like potato pancakes. It's really good. Mm. We've had a couple different versions of this. We've had the Hortobaji version, which is wrapped in the crepe. We've had the normal version, which is basically in a stew with dumpling. And this is the worst version that we've had for sure. The chicken's a little bit dry. It's much better when it's cooked in the sauce because then the chicken absorbs all that sauce. And it's perfect to put on top of the dumplings. It's like a great combination. But this one with the, the potato is just okay. I would say more expensive. Elevated does not always mean that it's better. I think sometimes the classics are the way to go. So if you're gonna have chicken paprikash, look for the regular version with the dumplings because that's the best version. This is really good, but we've had better. So maybe the most basic standard Hungarian restaurant might have the best chicken paprikash. The next dish is strobrochka, I guess. And you can actually find this in Slovakia as well. It's kind of hard to figure out if it's actually from Hungary or if it's from Slovakia, but you can find it in both places. So what this is, is these little potato dumplings with sheep cheese mixed in, and then these little, I guess, lardons or little pieces of bacon on top. And this one's also topped with raw red onion and sour cream. So we've actually had this before as a side in our Buddha video, so you should check that out. And we've also had this in Slovakia. Mmm. Mmm. That's absolutely delicious. Super creamy. The little dumplings are really soft, but the best part are those little crispy pieces of pork. They crunch in your mouth. You get this little crackling. This is kind of a dish that could be sickly if you had too much of it, but it's perfect to share between two people. Mm. This cheap cheese dish, forgot the name, is really, really good. It reminds me of a different version of Spätzle, if you know. Austrian food or German food, we have Käse Spätzle, cheese Spätzle, and instead of the usual Emmentaler cheese or whatever that they use, this uses sheep cheese. Yeah, this is yummy. I like this one. It's less creamy than another one we had in the past, but yummy. So the reason we actually came here is for this dessert. It's called Um and our viewers actually told us to eat this because we had another video in the past where we tried some of the best Hungarian desserts. We didn't try this dish and a lot of our viewers said, you have to try to Rogombok. And they're cottage cheese dumplings, kind of like the Austrian Knödel. They come with whipped cream in this case, I think with lemon. They're supposed to be quite light and airy and also like a summer dessert, I think. And I'm really excited because this looks delicious. It looks like it has a little bit of like coconut shavings. This is definitely also a bit of a fancier version. Okay, let's try this. Mm. Almost tastes like bread on the outside, like um, breadcrumbs. Maybe I'm crazy. <laughs> the cottage cheese dumplings taste like uh, cheesecake, not like American cheesecake, a bit more like German but more grainy. It's like cottage cheese. Not very sweet, and I don't know if the dumpling is warm. Yeah. The dumpling is actually warm. I don't know if it's always like that. Yeah, it's not really sweet at all. The cream makes it sweet, but this is very delicious. I'm glad a Hungarian follower said we should try this because this is, this is yummy. We're now walking to the next stop. Um, but just a little disclaimer, I think a lot of Hungarians are probably gonna say, you're spending too much money, why are you going to all these expensive places? Um, we're well aware of that. The reason is that with some dishes we 
just couldn't find a place that actually had it. For example, the Turogambok dessert that we just had. We went to a couple of restaurants and they were out of it. So that's why we went to a more expensive restaurant. Although we do recommend the three dishes that we showed, we definitely wouldn't necessarily recommend this place to try them because there's so many more traditional Hungarian restaurants that aren't as touristy. They're a lot cheaper and they're more traditional. But the dessert was amazing, so I have to say, but you could probably find it better in many other places for a lot cheaper. So definitely check out a different place because... Yeah. The dessert was amazing though. Yeah go for the dessert but not for the other dishes yeah For our next dish, we're at Arego Schwendigle and I'm gonna try a dish that's called Velosch Pate, which is tripe, which is the stomach of cow and it comes with bone marrow and potatoes and it's kind of like in a stew and I'm not entirely sure but I think sometimes it can be brain at least the translation says pig's brain but I'm not sure this one is bone marrow I don't normally love tribe we've tried it in lots of countries and they have a tribe dish in Romania and other places I normally don't love it so let's see Mm. It's almost like like a bit crunchy or like like there's sand in it or something. <laughs> it's just not the best. But the taste is very good. It has like the usual Hungarian paprika flavor. It's a chewy texture, but it's actually not that bad. It almost like melts in your mouth. And I think that's the marrow as well. I quite like the marrow. But you can like make it dissolve just by using your tongue. It's pretty good. Still not my favorite. I don't think I'm ever going to love tripe. But as we said, you should try everything at least once. And tripe is very popular here and in other countries in this region, like I said. So you should definitely give this a try. Unlike Anya, I'm actually kind of a fan of tripe, especially as far as organ meats go. I feel like a lot of the time it's not as gamey as some other organ meats can be. So I actually like this dish. Mm. I disagree with Anya. I actually really like it. Tripe actually does have a little bit of a snap, but as you said, it totally dissolves in your mouth. I mean, it has the traditional Hungarian flavors with paprika and all those other things. And the vegetables are also really soft and nice. Personally, I really like this dish, and I think you should give it a try. And also, the Romanian one, maybe I'll have to put the name up, also really good. So, if you're in Hungary, give it a go. Our next dish is perkolt, which is a Hungarian meat stew. Now, you can get all sorts of different types of meat with this, including pork, beef, but you can also get game meats like wild boar, rabbit, and what we have right here is deer or venison. So traditionally, it's often served with little potato dumplings, but this version comes with little potato croquettes. So that's why I really like this version. It's a little bit different than what you would normally have. So I will start with some of the meat. Already putting my fork into it, it doesn't seem super tender, but let's see. Mm. Actually, it's more tender than I thought. It's not melt in your mouth, but the texture is really nice. It's definitely not dry. Again, always has that paprika kind of flavor, Light, nice meaty texture. Let's try one of these croquettes. So living in Spain, we had all sorts of croquetas all the time, but this one's a simple version. It's just potato, mashed potato, deep fried. It's got a batter on the outside. Mmm. Mmm. It's so good. It's basically like a little deep fried log of mashed potato. It's the perfect accompaniment to a goulash, a meat dish like this. It's really, really tasty. So right now we're taking a little bit of pit stop at Lost 36 Bar here because we need a little bit of liquid courage for one of our next dishes because it's gonna take some balls to try that one. Another must try thing when you're in Hungary are the Hungarian liquors. 
And we have two of the most important Hungarian liquors with us today. The first one, you may have seen it before in a previous video of ours, and that is Palinka. Palinka is a fruit brandy. We mentioned before, it comes in all sorts of flavors, including pear, apricot, cherry. We actually recently had a poppy seed one even. But the one I have here is sour cherry, and Anya has apricot. In our previous video, we made the mistake of sitting there and sipping the Palinka, and all of our Hungarian viewers, the commenters told us we were doing it all wrong. We should be doing it in a shot. So today, we are gonna do it in that way. I guess that means cheers in Hungarian. I'm sure I butchered it, but who gives a shit? Cheers. It burns. <laughs> but it's delicious. I'm terrified. I normally don't drink shots. So Egesigere means cheers. And there's also Kutsintashna, I think, which means here's to us. So Kutsintashna. Oh my god. Mmm. <laughs> Why do people do this? The other alcohol that we have, which is one of the national liquors of Hungary, is Unikum, which is, I think, a little bit like Jägermeister in Germany, because it's a dark herbal liqueur. It's been around since 1790, so a long time, and apparently the name comes from a moment where some emperor got this drink and he said in German, das ist ein Unikum, and that means this is unique. So I guess the name is German for unique. Round two. Cheers. Egeshegere. Delicious. Ooh. We came to Lecho Hungarian restaurant. And the first dish we're gonna try is actually called lecho, which is a vegetable stew made out of peppers and tomato and vegetables, I suppose. It comes with rice. You can actually get a version with egg and sausage as well, but we thought we'll get the vegetarian version because there aren't too many vegetarian Hungarian dishes, I think. And apparently it's kind of like the Hungarian ratatouille. I've never had ratatouille or anything. <laughs> <laughs> but it looks delicious, it smells delicious. It looks like there's a lot of paprika in there. Mm. It's delicious. The peppers and tomatoes are stewed, so they're very soft and smooth and taste like paprika, just basically exactly how you would imagine, I feel like. I think having a bit of sour cream or something would be really good, but it's, it's delicious. Mm. It's a very simple dish, as she said. It's just stewed peppers with tomato. I don't know about you, but I tasted meat. I tasted like some sort of pork or something flavor, so I'm not 100% sure if this version is gonna be vegetarian. Some are made with pork fat. I guess it's really it delicious. It wasn't on the vegetarian dishes. So it wasn't, vegetarian. you're right. So maybe this isn't vegetarian, but it can be a vegetarian dish, because sometimes they just make it with oil, but this one tastes meaty, but it's really delicious. Very simple, but tasty. Next up is halasli, or fisherman stew. This is actually something that we've had before in the past. It is a, as the name suggests, a fish stew. It's usually made with carp or catfish or any kind of river fish. And it's actually normally served around Christmas Eve sometimes. We actually ordered it before from a fancy hotel and that's the first time we had it and it was pretty good. It's supposed to be one of the spiciest dishes in Europe, but I don't know, it doesn't really seem that way. So the one that we have, I'm not really sure what fish is served with it, but it has like, is it catfish? It says on the menu. Oh, okay, well this one is definitely served with catfish and it has that really dark red looking broth that you associate with a lot of Hungarian dishes, which of course comes from the hot paprika from it. Let's try it. It has these really big chunks of catfish inside, which I just dropped everywhere. Mm. The fish is super soft. As I said before, this is not spicy at all. So I wonder if we're not having the most authentic version because According to Wikipedia, it can be really spicy, but this is very mild. You just taste the paprika. This is very soft, meaty. It's really tasty overall, but it's definitely something you should try when you come to Hungary because it's quite popular. Mm. It's 
it's not spicy, like Brandon said, and the fish is delicious. It doesn't seem to have any other parts, and I think last time when we had it for Christmas, there was a bunch of other parts in there, bones, the head, and all these kind of things. And I think that's how it's supposed to be. I didn't like that that much. This version, maybe it's more for tourists, but it's good for me. Another dish that's really popular in Hungary is fried cheese, which is a popular dish in other countries in this area as well. If you haven't seen a video about foods in Austria, you should check it out. We actually tried some fried cheese in Vienna as well, which was delicious. But here they have the Trapista Scheit, which means Trapista cheese. And that's kind of the most popular cheese they have in Hungary, I feel like, when you go to the supermarket and just in our experience living here. It's been the most uh, popular cheese. It actually comes from France, but it's very popular here. And it's made by Monks. Yeah, it was by, made by Monk originally in France. It comes with some tartar sauce. That's all you get. And that's it's all you need. All you need, yeah. Mm. I mean, how can you go wrong? with fried cheese. It's so good. <laughs> I guess similar to mozzarella cheese, but I feel like more towards the like Gouda and Mentale. I don't know, it's kind of like a, in the middle. I feel mozzarella cheese doesn't taste like much. This one isn't super strong, it's in the middle. It's just perfect. And the sauce is really good. It tastes delicious. Now for the moment you've all been waiting for, the reason that we needed to get some liquid courage is for this dish here. I don't quite know the Hungarian name, it's hard to pronounce, but this is essentially rooster's testicles. Yes, you heard that right. Personally, this is the first time I've had a pair of balls in my mouth. I don't know about other people, but I guess this is a good place to start. They're pretty small and it's served with nukoldi, which is a pretty typical Hungarian dumpling. It's very small, served with most stews. Let's just shut up and try them. Mm. <laughs> so before we came here, Anya told me a couple different comparisons for these, that it would taste a little bit like tofu or kind of like chicken livers. And I kind of get that comparison. It definitely has a softness to it. There is a kind of outer skin that pops in your mouth. Yes, the balls pop in your mouth. Honestly, it's really not bad at all. We've had multiple different types of organ meats and other things like that, and I feel like these are far less offensive than liver and tripe and intestines, things like that. It's much easier to eat. So I think that uh, my first time eating balls, decent experience. <laughs> <laughs> it's not my first rodeo in testicles. <laughs> I'm just kidding. They're good. <laughs> just like I remember. No, I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, it do taste like tofu. And I didn't think the skin was so weird, but I taste. I, I got one that was already burst open. Oh yeah, now I taste a little bit of liver, like aftertaste. But it's basically like a tofu consistency with a little aftertaste of uh, liver. But it comes with the standard paprika kind of taste. Like basically all the dishes we got today were orange has <laughs> a similar taste and yeah not bad pretty good best pair of balls you've had in your mouth probably and this dish is called kaka shere perkut so just a different version of the deer stew that we tried earlier and i'm wondering do you hungarians even eat this this was on the retro list of this restaurant's menu so pretty old school dish i think let us know in the comments people who live here and are in hungary do you eat balls all the time? Or really not. is this like very outdated? It's good. Now the final stop for some dessert and we are at Samosh Bakery which is apparently one of the best bakeries in Budapest. It's been around since 1935 and cakes and pastries are quite popular in Hungary anyway, kind of like in Vienna or in Austria 
And right here I have the Esther Hazy Torta, which is one of the famous cakes of Hungary. Apparently it has different layers of vanilla or cognac flavored buttercream. So it has a fondant on top and I think some type of nut paste. I think it used to have almonds, but nowadays it said that they use walnut. Mm. You're the nut expert. This is good. This is so creamy. And immediately, I have to say, it's better than the nut cake that we had in Austria. This is like really divine. And I don't know if it's cognac. It doesn't really taste like alcohol or anything like that. It is quite sweet and very walnutty. So it's totally my jam. 10 out of 10. Coming in here, we also notice that they sell all sorts of chocolate. They've got all these chocolate boxes, individual chocolates. And then we notice that apparently there's a chocolate making school here and they manufacture their own chocolate. They have a little studio actually kind of right next to us where you can see them making chocolate. There's nobody there right now, but that's pretty cool. So now I'm gonna try this cake. Let's see how it is. <laughs> <laughs> Let's try that again. Mm. That's really good. I don't know if I agree with you. I feel like immediately when I took a bite of it, I had some sort of amaretto, alcoholic cognac kind of taste. Walnut. Maybe it is just the walnut, but really, really nice. So I'm excited to try the next one. Now I'm gonna try the Dobosch Torta. And this cake is actually pretty famous in Hungary. I feel like this is one of the main cakes that a lot of people wanted us to try. And it has these layers of chocolate, kind of almost like a ganache, like a chocolate pudding almost. And then these thin layers of cake that apparently have crushed walnuts on top. And then it's topped with this really crispy, hard caramel layer that I don't even know if I can cut that with a fork. So I'm gonna just go in and I'm gonna try the cake itself, then I have that. But apparently it was made by a man called Joseph Dobash and it is named after him. That's a pretty big bite. Mmm, it's really good. It's very simple, but it's very, very sweet, very, very chocolate forward. I think that it's gonna be even better with this caramel piece on top, but I think I'm gonna try this caramel layer on its own. So let's see how this is. Mmm. Mmm. Yeah. That crispy caramel layer is where it's at for sure. Completely changes the cake. It's almost like biting into a toffee or caramel apple. It's very, very sweet. It reminds me also kind of of a creme brulee. You have the topping on the creme brulee, this burnt caramelized sugar. Overall, it's, it's really unique. I don't really think I've had anything like this before. It's delicious. And if you do come to Budapest, you definitely need to try this because it's amazing. I'm gonna try the Dobosch torta properly, I think. So I'm gonna have a little piece. I don't know if I have to, it's so hard. I have to break it. break it off. This one is a lot more dense than the other one, I feel like, even when I just go through it. And I think the, the cream kind of reminds me of Nutella, like the way it looks. And you can smell the cocoa, though. Whoa. It's so hard. Mm. It's definitely something that's gonna break your teeth. <laughs> if you have some fillings, they're gonna come right out. But it's delicious, this cream. It tastes so rich, sweet, decadent. I do prefer the Esther Hazy Torta a little bit more because it's nuts. This one's chocolate, chocolate's not my favorite, but this one's delicious. This is the end of our video. Thanks for watching. If there's any dishes that we haven't tried and you want us to try, let us know in the comments below. And of course, as always, if you like the video, make sure to give it a like, write us a comment, and of course, most important thing, subscribe. But for now, that is it, and we'll see you all in the next one. Goodbye. Bye.